Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about a subject that frankly over the last 18 months has really bubbled to the surface. Today I want to talk about why exactly are so many brands in the world of network attached storage erring towards crowdfunding when launching their products. Do you remember when Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Crowdsupply and all of those different platforms were purely for the indies, purely for the startups. Brands that didn't really have much of a rep, they had an idea, a dream, and they just needed some funds to get it off the ground. Those days, unfortunately, are long gone, and the majority of what we see in crowdfunding websites now, because of larger players in the market, has now become something of an entry point for even established brands to launch products. Now, why is that? Well, probably one of the earliest reasons to do it is simply the marketing machine. Brands like Kickstarter do a very, very big job in promoting their platform to even establish brands to say, if they, for example, are based in the East that don't really have a huge understanding or an entry into Western marketplaces, Kickstarter does provide a lot of tools be they analytical or simply based on trend reports and presentation to allow products to be put in front of the right users in a way that some companies don't have access or are limited and cannot access a lot of those resources in the first place can really benefit from. Now in this category, we talk about brands like Ugreen. Ugreen are a brand name that are globally known for cables, for power banks, stuff like that. They aren't exactly a new brand. When they launched their crowdfunding at the start of 2024, a lot of users rightly pointed out why exactly is an established brand like them going for crowdfunding? And the simple answer was that even though they had brand knowledge and reputation around the world, they didn't know, according to them, that what the audience would want in a NAS, or more importantly, how many people would actually buy a Ugreen NAS product. You know, there are a lot of China and Hong Kong based companies producing NAS for the first time. And in those two regions, the understanding of what a NAS needs to be is different in other parts of the world. Again, they cater it in certain ways. They release different devices out the gate. They only limited distribution to, I think, the US and just Germany. But we can move away from them onto another brand like Zspace. Zspace is a Chinese NAS brand that's been around for quite a lot of years. But they don't really have much of a presence outside of that region. And that was why a company like Zspace would then start launching products like this one. This is the Unify Drive, the UT2, the first in now a series of portable NAS drives onto crowdfunding. The reason being that even though the product was already available in those regions, it wasn't really catered to this larger global market. Which then brings us to brands like Linkstation. Linkstation are a brand with a huge legacy and history in tablets, mini computers, that sort of thing. And Linkstation wanted to roll out a NAS drive. But again, they didn't have the experience, they didn't have the knowledge base. So I can understand why using a platform like Indiegogo, like Kickstarter, will allow them to spend less or at least a singular amount based on percentage of sales and percentage of profit on the marketing of their products. There's actually an appeal when you think about it in the simplicity. I don't necessarily think it's ideal, but I can certainly see the appeal to them. Now at the other end, we can look at things like this one. This is something we're gonna be talking about in the coming weeks. We also talked about at the start of the year, this is the Station PC Pocket NAS. Now this is a oversimplified for some, variation of what NASes are, melding portability and local bare metal deployment. But again, it's such an unusual product compared with the status quo in NAS, I can see why going for crowdfunding would appeal to them. This brings us to the next reason why a lot of brands, particularly in the East, have started to err towards using crowdfunding when launching their product. And that is, it is quite difficult in some cases to have a website, have a platform managed in their own region that is easily accessible and distributionable outside of that region. How often when you're looking online and you look at some of the brands involved, not just in NAS, but networking and storage from network switches to whatever, that you try to go to the original website and your local browser tells you it's not a safe website, be it for SSL certificate reasons or whatever, or blacklisting, whether there is full truth in one website being less safe than another, purely based on its region, we could debate all day long. But 
a lot of the time it can be very, very convenient for a brand to use the platform that is Kickstarter, that is Indiegogo, to have a base as their portal to the rest of the world and use a lot of the presentation tools that the crowdfunding website supplies to them. And then you've got the largely unknown brands. Moving a lot of this out the way, we can look at things like this one. This at the end, you can just about make out of shot, is the OPN NAS. Now, this is a relatively unknown brand in the world of network attached storage. And for them, launching their product is going to be a big risk because there's a lot of investment, there's a lot of supply chain there. And frankly, when it comes to distributing their product, they're just not aware of what their audience in terms of frequency, in terms of size is going to be. And for them, utilizing crowdfunding is probably going to be the best option because to invest in production, to invest within mass production and having units on stock, both for RMA, quality assurance and more, it helps to know just how big your target audience and buying and selling power is going to be. So for them, probably crowdfunding is going to be the most obvious choice. And another thing, having your product launching on crowdfunding because you are effectively paying for that placement based on a commission rate on every one of the sales that they have through those platforms, it allows the brand to be a lot more creative and a lot more exact in their profit margins. Ultimately, that can mean, for example, having products out the gate on day one being apparent loss leaders, leading them to be able to sell a product very, very cheap to the first 10, 15, 20, 100 backers, and therefore create that organic buzz. Now, again, that doesn't work for everyone, and not everyone actually engages in that early sell, cheaping, uh, sell cheaper practice, but I would argue that for smaller brands where they've got the hardware and they need to get their name out there, crowdfunding can be very beneficial. But this is, of course, linked with a tremendous realistic drag factor that is those products that don't cross the line. Now, we can talk about one of the biggest ones in the world of network attached storage, and that was, of course, Storaxa that we talked about throughout 2023 and early 2024. And um, again, debates can go back and forth whether they were, at worst, a complete and utter scam, or they were people, you know, a, a team that were trying and failed and got out while the going was bad. Again, there's lots of pros, there's lots of cons, and there's lots of evidence that backs up either one of those positions. However, realistically, bad actors like Storaxa, unfortunately, have tarnished the potential for a lot of brands selling on crowdfunding. And it has to be highlighted that although, personally, it has to be a pretty compelling argument for me personally to buy on crowdfunding because unlike traditional retail where you are getting the goods over the counter with plenty of consumer rights, Crowdfunding is always with an element of risk. And I do think that's something that brands that report their products on crowdfunding could stand to address a lot more in their presentation. And maybe these things will change as we're covering quite a lot of crowdfunding solutions in 2025. Bottom line, there are going to be those that say that websites and YouTube channels like this one that talk about products that are being launched on crowdfunding in the context of them being traditional retail products is actually helping people lose their money. And although I don't agree with that philosophy, I can see why that might look the case. I would argue that if a solution looks like it might arrive in the market and the companies that are saying that this is the solution that people are backing, I think it is useful when those brands in question send products to review platforms, to editorial websites, to YouTube channels like mine and others to show you, the end user, what a legitimate product might be as long as it is always presented with the caveat that this is not traditional retail. Bottom line, I understand why brands use crowdfunding to launch their products. It makes for a greater degree of marketing power and a more controlled production cost in terms of delivering that message. But you don't have to agree with me. But what do you guys think? Were you burnt during the Storaxa fiasco? Or were you getting one of the more successful systems like the Zimacube, like the Ugreen now solutions, like the Z Spaces, the Link Stations and more? Let me know in the comments below. As mentioned, there's quite a lot of fun solutions coming out later this year and I can't wait to talk about them. But as ever, crowdfunding, not the same as retail, Keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.